Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So this channel, Everyday Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts involved in data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I'm going to solve this question on lead code regarding sales analysis part two and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. The difficulty level of this question is easy and this question has been asked in Amazon interviews over the past couple of years a number of times, right? Okay, let's jump right in. We are given a table called product with three different columns, product ID, product name and unit price, product ID being the primary key of this table. Each row of this table indicates the name and the price of each product. We are also given a second table called sales with six different columns, right? Seller ID, product ID, buyer ID, sale date, quantity and price. There is no primary key, so obviously it can have repeated rows. Product ID is the foreign key to the product table. Each row of this table contains some information about one sale. We are asked to write a SQL query that reports the buyers who have bought S8 but not iPhone. Note that S8 and iPhone are products present in product table. The order of the result does not matter. Okay, let's go through this example, right? So here we have product IDs and the different product names, right? So S8 product ID is 1 and iPhone product ID is 3. Now let's say we have the sales table, right? Okay, so uh, which all buyers bought S8, that is product ID 1, but did not buy iPhone, that is product ID 3, right? So buyer ID 1 bought product ID 1, which is S8, right? So, okay, so it should be in the output. Uh, buyer ID 2 did not buy iPhone, but did not even buy S8 as well, right? So 2 should not be in the output. Buyer ID 3 bought S8 as well as iPhone. So it should not be in the output as well, right? So the only in the output should be buyer ID 1, right? So that is what we need to do. Okay. So to do this, some of you might be, you know, thinking that why do we even need this product table, right? Can't we do something like this? Wait, let me, you know, go that route, which you, a lot of you might be thinking, right? And then we'll discuss the problem with that approach. Okay. So if I do, right, let's say if I do from this table called sales, right, where product ID, right, where product ID is equal to one and right, where and buyer ID not in and let's say return distinct buyer ID from the table called sales where your product ID is equal to 3. So basically what is this doing is from this table called sales, right, from the table where your product ID is equal to 1, right, so product ID is equal to 1 basically means this row and this row, right. We are only keeping those rows where product ID is 1 and the buyer ID is not a buyer who has bought the product ID 3 that is iPhone, right? So this will give all the buyers who have bought product ID 3 that is iPhone, right? So and the buyer ID not in this one, right? So out of 1 and 3, 3 will be excluded. And if you return, right? So if you return the buyer ID from this, right? So if I run this, Okay, so this is accepted, right? Okay, and like our output will be same as expected output. Now, what is the problem with this approach? Here, we are assuming that product ID equal to one or basically one is the product ID for asset, right? It is possible that in a different case, right? The product ID related to asset is two, then our code will fail, right? We are assuming that one belongs to S8 and three belongs to iPhone, but it is not the product ID that we should care about. We should care about product name, right? Because the question says buyers who have bought S8, not iPhone, right? So instead of doing this, that is what the importance of this table product table is that instead of going this route, because, you know, if I let, let me just submit it, right? So let's see like if this is passing all the test cases or not. Okay. So this is a wrong answer, right? And if you see it only passes three out of 12 and the reason is because in the test cases, right? For example, if you look at this test case, right? So here product ID one is not 
neither iPhone nor S8, right? It is something else. So if you see product ID 16 is now iPhone and here we have assumed that product ID 3 is equal to iPhone, right? So that is what the problem with this is. So to make it generalized, what changes we need to do is instead of this, we should firstly, you know, merge the information. So from this table called sales alias as S, let's s let's left join the table called product alias as p right on s dot product id right product id is equal to p dot product id right once you join this let's keep all the columns from sales right s dot star and only keep the product name from this right so p dot product name right let me run this let's see what we are getting okay so if i you know uh so if let's say what we have okay so you have the seller id so all information from sale uh, sales table and then the name of the product as well right okay so once we have this then what should we do is we should store this in a common table expression with CTE as right and then this entire thing goes into parentheses right so this goes into parentheses and now from this common table expression we are only keeping those rows where your product name is equal to S8 and your buyer id is not in the list of buyers who have bought iphone right so return distinct buyer id from this common table expression where product name is equal to iphone so once you you know exclude those then if you return right so return distinct buyer ids right so once you give that then if i go ahead and run this so now this is accepted in this which was obviously in the previous case as well but now if i go ahead and submit it let's see what happens okay so now it runs and passes all the 12 test cases right so yeah this is how we do this so now you understand the importance of product table and why going the first route was not a generalized solution and going this route is the generalized solution, right? So yeah, this is how we do it. Let me know if there is a better way or a more efficient way you can think of to solve this question. Let the solution be in the comment section below. And until then, I will see you guys in the next video.